it is that time of year again where I make a DIY painted Christmas ornament with supplies from Michaels. Thank you, Michaels, for sponsoring this video. And because I've done this for a few years in a row, I kind of know the deal. I kind of do the same thing over and over again. I take like a little canvas, usually like a piece of blood, and I paint something on it and I hang it on a tree with a little string. I didn't want to do that again this year just because I have a lot of those now and I want a different kind of ornament, but uh, I might be going a little extra ambitious for this year. I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out. So I'm a little nervous. I've got some backup plans if things don't turn out. <laughs> I'm so nervous about it. <sighs> My idea is to take this little clear ornament. It's kind of like a squished circle. So it's got flatter surfaces on each side and try and create a like, the illusion of a 3D image. So I'm thinking, paper trees inside, snow at the bottom, and then painted on the back like a background, like a landscape background with some trees and a mountain. To do this though, there's a lot of moving parts, including putting trees inside. I, I bought a second one just in case I royally screw this one up. <laughs> you can take the top off so you can put little things inside. So I'm planning to put paper trees, like two paper trees that I've painted in there put snow in there and then on the back paint the landscape. That's the trickiest part because to paint a landscape on the back and have it show at the front, I have to paint in reverse of the elements from the way I usually paint. <laughs> My brain's already exploding. Usually I paint background and then I layer things on top when I'm working with acrylics, right? This time I need to paint the foreground pieces and then layer each piece behind it. So I have to start, so instead of doing sky, mountains, trees, uh, land, I have to go land, trees, mountain, sky. And if I want stars, I have to do the stars. My little pea brain is gonna have a really hard time with this. So I don't know how this is gonna go. And I'm not able to like sketch it out on here before I paint because then you're gonna see the sketch lines cause you're gonna see the front of it. So <laughs> I'm excited, but I'm very nervous. Uh, so I've got a backup in case this goes horribly. I've got my artist loft. Uh, Artist Loft level two acrylic paints, which I love. I use them all the time. Uh, I've got a selection of new little brushes. And as a backup, just in case this goes horribly wrong and I'm just so defeated and I need to like do something to feel accomplished, I bought this children's 3D ceramic kit. This doesn't have to be for children. It could be for grownups too. It's got uh, an alpaca, a unicorn, a rainbow and a donut. So I can paint these if I really just suck really hard at making it. <laughs> we'll see, see, I've got a plan. I've got a plan B. Everything's gonna be okay. I know it feels like chaos, but hopefully at the end of this, I'm gonna have a beautiful new ornament to put on my pink Christmas tree, which I also got at Michael's. <laughs> Cute little pink Christmas tree. I'm gonna put the end product here right now so you can see if it's actually worth following along with me with this little DIY project. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. <sighs> okay, I got obviously everything I need at Michael's. My my paints, these guys, I, they sell these individually. I didn't have to buy a big pack, which was really, really nice. Um, my brushes, the tree. <laughs> you can get everything you need at Michael's. So in my sketchbook, I took an ornament put it against it, drew a little circle so I can kind of get a gist of how big it is, and then kind of sketched out where I want my elements to be. I think I'm gonna start, oh God. I'm gonna start with making the two trees that go inside the ornament. I don't have any snow. Like usually you know, in like cute little ornaments, you'll see like little like styrofoam beads that like act as a cute little snow layer. I don't have that. I didn't think to buy that. I'm thinking about cutting up toilet paper into like really tiny pieces. I'll let you know how that goes. Um, and then once those guys are in, actually, I'm not gonna put them in yet. Before I put those in, I'm gonna paint the background for a carefully. Let's see how it goes. Let's get started. 
Okay, so what I did here is I took the scrap piece of watercolor paper that literally is just laying around. I traced kind of like as best as I could a little circle. It's hard to do because it's so angled that it's hard to get like a perfect circle. But just to give me an idea of where I want these little paper cutout trees to be. And then once I had that circle, I sketched out the two little trees that I want to put inside. I gave them a little bit of texture on the sides. I'm going to keep a little bit of this curve to see if that'll help them stay up a little bit in the ornament and what I'm going to do now is just cut out this piece so that's all going to be gone so that I'll have two little trees on watercolor paper to paint. So now that I have this guy cut out I'm going to paint both the front and the back because this is kind of like gonna have a 3D effect, just in case you see it a little bit from the side. I want both sides to be painted. I'm only gonna do detail on one side, but just in case, they're both gonna get a dark green layer and then I'm gonna add some more layers on top and maybe some ornaments, maybe. We'll see, whatever I'm feeling. But first I need a base coat. So I added some details to my tree, not a lot, just like a couple little layers of like green lines on top of that dark green to get some kind of shaded needly effect. This is future Emily popping in to say that I actually did not like the way this tree ended up once I painted that dark background um, because I had made the tree too dark and it had just blended it too much and you could barely see that it was in the foreground. So I lightened up the little needles a lot more and then I'm also deciding to add some little Christmas lights just to make it come to the front a little bit more and give more of that illusion of uh, like a three-dimensional space. So I decided to tell you now instead of having to rip your tree out of your ornament like I had to do which was very scary and stressful so if you want to put little accents on your tree go for it and do it before you put it in. <laughs> I like that much better. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it inside the ornament. One, to test if I can even get it in there without like crushing it completely. Um, and then two, so when I paint the back, I kind of know where these trees are so I can lay it out compositionally in a way that I like. But I don't know, wish me luck, <laughs> wish me luck. This is what it looks like inside, if you can see past my, my ring light. <laughs> Get some of that away. Get away. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, now for the scariest part. I'm going to try and reverse paint a landscape on this back side so that <laughs> you can see trees. Oh, that goes for trees land, tree line, mountains, stars, moon, sky. Wish me luck. So I'm just going to, because there's no way to really sketch this on here first, kind of look at my sketch right there and kind of play it by ear on how I want this to go. So. So I painted on four little tiny trees with the same color that I painted the darkest color of the foreground trees. I had to do a couple coats because since it's a transparent surface, the transparency of the paints was very, very clear. Now they're pretty opaque, so it should be pretty good now, but it took about three or four coats of these guys. They dried pretty quick, so it didn't take too long but know that if you're working on a transparent surface like this. So what I'm gonna do now is take this blue color, blue whitish color that I mixed up and make it the background for these trees, or not the background, the ground, the snowy ground for these trees. So I'm gonna make a line right across there and kind of draw a line around so that I don't have to like go past certain points because obviously I want 
this side to be nice and clear and see-through. And then I'm gonna do, after I make that, I'm gonna do a little line, like a little tree line, a little mountain, tiny little dots, white dots for the stars, a little moon, and then the rest is going to be like a bluish for the night sky. Okay, so I have this subtle tree line down, these mountains down, and I just put in a little moon, and I tried to put in the stars with my paintbrush, my paintbrush was just too thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mechanical pencil, tap it in my white paint, so then I could just go and make little stars. Okay, so now finally, I'm starting the sky background color and I'm gonna paint the whole back this color so it kind of looks uniform and it doesn't have these like weird stripes because I wanted to have like the illusion of this cool like um, landscape from the front, but I don't wanna just see like weird stripes on the back. So I'm gonna put it all this bluey purple kind of thing. I know I'm gonna have to do a couple coats for this, so. Doing a lot of uh, painting, waiting as it dries, and then painting and waiting and painting and waiting and painting and waiting, and I won't make you sit through that. Okay, so I've painted the back of this fully. I feel like it's got enough coats on it that it's totally opaque. And the front reveal that you could barely see because my light, <laughs> my circle light, has that layered effect so I can get a landscape with mountains and sky. I do wish there was more contrast happening in that back row where it's got the tree line, the mountain, and the sky, but it could be a lot worse for <laughs> the first time I'm doing this and there's nothing that I can do to change it because the layer that's showing is the layer on the bottom. I also have, you can see, there's a tiny little bit of gray paint from the mountain there in the corner. You see that without the reflection? That I cannot get rid of now because I've already painted this layer. There's no, there's nothing I can do to change it. So we're gonna move on. And while this is drying, I'm going to uh, attempt to make some snow. I have a few options that I'm gonna test out. Uh, I'm gonna maybe chop up some white yarn that I got from Michaels, chop this up into tiny pieces and see if I like that snow effect. I also did steal the toilet paper from my downstairs bathroom to see if I can make some kind of snow effect from this. Hopefully my wife does not use that bathroom while I have the toilet paper. I also have as a last resort, this stuffing that my dog tore out of one of his dog toys. I don't like it, but if I hate these more, then this is gonna be what it is. So let's see what happens. Let's cut up some toilet paper and some yarn. <laughs> Okay, obviously the yarn is gonna look cuter than the toilet paper. I don't know why I ever thought the toilet paper was gonna work. Look it, that's perfect. That's what we're gonna use. So I'm gonna cut up some more yarn. Okay, so here's all my snowy fluff that I cut up from that yarn. <laughs> there are fibers floating through the air, going in my lungs. It's gonna be worth it in the end though. Is this dry? I'm going to start to shimmy shimmy some of these fluffs in shimmy 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 get in there come on so we can get some snow there at the bottom i'm gonna put it behind the tree and in front of the tree so it kind of like helps it stand up a little bit there are fibers all over the ornament though i'm gonna have to wipe those off i put a lot of fluff in here very very fluffy and you can't really see my background anymore so i'm just gonna Try shoving this fluff down into place to see if I can get back some of that background. After a few Christmas tree adjustments, which I now have talked about earlier in the video, my little ornament is complete. I'm not gonna lie, um, that was a pretty stressful project. Um, then there's a lot of things that I would change about it. I would paint the Christmas trees lighter in the first place so I don't have to rip them out and then repaint them. 
Um, I would also add more contrast in the background. I kind of made everything really dark, including the sky, the mountains, and the trees, the backest background trees. And because it's, you're looking at it past like a transparent layer and with a lot of stuff in the foreground, it's hard to like differentiate between those elements. So you can't really see them that well unless you're looking at it pretty close, which is cute, but it could be better. So I definitely make that stuff more contrasty. But honestly, for how stressful it was, it wasn't that hard. I just put a lot of pressure on myself and it's very fun and cute. And I feel like you could do a lot of things with this. You could put like a little like cabin there or you could put a snowman or like whatever you want to do with it. I really like this like concept of painting the back round and then adding fluff and a little element in the front. But I feel high strung now. And so I'm gonna paint a rainbow. Enjoy this time lapse of me painting a rainbow and I will see you in the next video.